My first guest is the best-selling author of The Fault in Our Stars and the brand new Turtles All the Way Down. Here is John Green. Uh, so let's talk about the book, to start off. Sure. Turtles All the Way Down. Yeah. And the protagonist yeah. is a girl named Aza. Mm -hmm. She's 16 years old. Yeah. So she's in high school getting ready to think about college. And in many ways, she's a smart, cool kid. She's got some friends. But she also has something in which she cannot control many of the thoughts that go into her brain. Yeah. Specifically, she thinks that she has a fatal bacterial infection or that she's about to get one. Right. And yeah. that's her obsession. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's, it's funny and also the most tragic thing. I mean. Yeah, it's funny unless um, you personally have your thoughts hijacked for months or years at a time. And then it's not so funny because if you can't choose what you think about over a long period of time, that really sort of destabilizes what exactly people mean when they talk about you. Sure. Like if you're not responsible for or being able to choose your thoughts, then like are you not possibly a passenger in this consciousness that you are stuck inside of, which is like, for me at least, somewhat terrifying. She has, the name for it is OCD. Yeah. That, I mean, she has yeah. the obsessions, which is this idea that there's a fatal or at any moment fatal bacteria that could enter her. And she has the compulsion. And I don't want to interrupt you, but the, yeah, thing, no, no, about, the thing about C. diff is that it, it's not like it could at any moment interrupt it you. It couldn't at all. It's already inside of you. <laughs> and it, and it. <laughs> so like, there's that to deal with. There is, there is. Yeah. So you're, patience. Okay, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. I just, it's just like you made it out to be like, oh, she's being so irrational. And she is like, her, her response to the fact. Everybody has it. That she is a skin and case bacterial colony is somewhat irrational, but like on the other hand, like I, it's weird. It. it's weird, it's weird, it's weird that half of the cells inside of your body are not you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, let's just, let's just get it out on the table. Yeah. The book meant a lot to me. And Thanks, the reason, man. And, and I've loved all your books, but I, I have OCD. I believe you have OCD as well. Yeah, I don't I do. yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Unless I'm on TV. And. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah. But one man or woman's OCD obsession is not another man or woman. So you could, you're, I get it. C. diff, a bacteria that could cause death that's in all of us. That, I am cool with that. But yeah. radon in my house, that's another story entirely. Oh, I, if you want to go down I'm the- I'm well aware of the radon in your house issue. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to go into it again, because I, yeah. I know no. more about it than anyone other than your spouse. Right, that's right. <laughs> Do you know more than the guy at the hotline in Kansas City who I call I mean, every few like, months? The thing, one of the things about OCD is that, like, and I make fun of it too, and like, this is something we, we, we have together and that we've made fun of together for 15 the years. The whole basis of our friendship, I think. It, it, it is sort of the whole basis of our friendship. I mean, certainly the initial point of connection was yeah. meeting somebody yeah. else who gets their thoughts hijacked for long periods of time, and, right. and, 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 and you feel less alone in that. And that's really why I wrote the book, like, was because I wanted to, I wanted to feel less alone in it, and also I wanted other people to maybe feel that way, but. But is um, C. diff your, one of your obsessions? No, so I mean. Because I, you could it, never write about yours. You would yeah, go crazy. You're right, you can't write, I can't write about mine. I'm too, uh, they're too close to me, so, you know, when I set out to write the novel, I knew that I was gonna be writing a novel. I wanted it to be kind of like aggressively fictional. I wanted it to be very obviously not real, um, both to me and to the reader. And I, um, as part of that, I knew that I couldn't, I can't write directly. I can't even, to be honest, I can't even talk directly. Like I'm very impressed with your ability to talk about the radon thing I'm, because I I'm can't. Going, I'm going through some I can't, issues I, in my head yeah, at the moment. I, I, can't, I can't talk directly about my yeah. um, obsessive thought spirals because it feels too dangerous. It feels, um, it just, yeah, it feels dangerous. And, and it's also worth noting that Radon is a real problem. Yeah, no, that's the thing. And, and one, of the, one of the embarrassments for me of my obsessional thinking is that, uh, you know, like, in, in a way I'm trivializing 
real problems that real people go right. through. And that's something that AZA struggles with as well. C. diff is also a real problem, and people who live with C. diff infections um, you know, can have chronic health problems that are very serious and very difficult. And in a way, like her obsessive worry about this stuff feels as if she's trivializing other people's experience. That said, like when you're inside of that thought spiral, there is literally, for me at least, nothing that you can do about it. Like it is not something that you choose or that anyone would choose. One of the classic ones is I have AIDS. Right. When you don't have AIDS. Right. But AIDS is a tragedy that has killed many, 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 many people. Yeah. And yet you're not you're not trying to trivialize it. You think you do in that O C D way. Right, right. And there's a there, there's a lot of like sexual obsessions that are that are similar that um or you know and, and it is a very, one of the things that makes it a difficult thing to live with is that it's a difficult thing to talk about because it is, for me, like I have worked really hard not to feel stigmatized or embarrassed about the brain disorder that I have, but I still do. Yeah. I still feel embarrassed about it. I still feel a little ashamed about it. And um, in the end, like I felt, I, you know, initially I didn't want to write this book. I wanted to write a bunch of different books and they kept not working and not working and not working. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that um, this, this was the this was this only true story that I could tell right now, if that makes any sense. Like this is the, this was the only story that felt real to me in that time because for a lot of the period of writing the book, I, I, I was, pretty sick or, or emerging out of one of the worst periods of, uh, of it that I've had. From a writing standpoint, one of the most brilliant things about it, which I, I just can't believe you pulled it off, is that writing about a, from a character's perspective, who, who is hap the thing with OCD is you could be talking to me and having a conversation, but at the same time, you're having a totally different set of thoughts going on that are your obsessions. That would be, and there are moments in the book where that, that is going on, but overall, that would drive the reader nuts if every single page were, but somehow you, you pulled it off where it was fully believable that she has, that she suffers from what she suffers from without making it unreadable. Yeah, I mean, that was something I thought a lot about, like, to what extent do you make this a difficult, like, physically difficult book to read? Yeah. And, like, I, I, I appreciate it if somebody is willing to spend eight or ten hours with my story, and I don't want to be mean to them. Um, I don't, like, I don't want to... I, I want to try to... I mean, I, I, I desperately, for personal reasons and also for other reasons, I desperately wanted to try some, to find some kind of form or expression uh, for, for, for this way of thinking, for what it feels like to have the notion of yourself so uh, undermined as if it's all built upon sand. And, um, but at the same time, I wanted it to be a fun, like a fun, as fun a book as you can have when it's about that. Well, it is, it is a, actually a fun book. And, but is there something also that's, you mentioned this idea also when we, when we first started talking about if these thoughts aren't mine, yeah. then am I real? But isn't that in some ways the e eternal question that certainly teenagers ask, who am I? When am I? Yeah, and, and, and is there a me that exists independent of circumstances? Am I nothing but a response to the circumstances that I've encountered? Am I the same exact person that anybody else who went through my life would be? And maybe that is a question primarily of adolescence, but it is one that in middle age I find myself asking quite a lot. Like, um, ultimately, like, am I just doing exactly what I would be doing, you know, if I weren't the, the so-called captain of my consciousness? Like, am I, am, am I more of a sort of prisoner inside of this self, or am I the actor, the, the protagonist somehow of myself? I still don't. I still don't have a good answer for that. Yeah, we're not going to settle it on this episode. Probably not. not yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Have you seen the movie Sliding Doors? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good segue. Let's talk about the title. The title of the book. Yeah. Turtles all the way down. Yeah. It's in. It's. I'm not. This is not a spoiler. It's a real thing. It's this idea that the Earth 
is not that the Earth is not round, that it's flat, and that it rests upon the back of a turtle, which yeah. is in, on top of another turtle, on top of another turtle, on top of another turtle, all the way down. Right. What does that? Where does that come from? The story goes that this lecturer gives a long lecture about how the history of the Earth, and then this, at the end of it, this old woman raises her hand and says, "That's all very well and good, but the truth is that the Earth is a." Um, a flat plane resting on the back of a giant tortoise, and uh, the, the 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 lecturer, thinking himself very smart, says, "Well, what is that turtle uh, standing on?" And then the woman says, well, "You don't understand. It's turtles all the way down." <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's very helpful uh, to me when you when you think recursively, when you think in spirals or in loops. Um, the, in a way, like when I first heard the turtles all the way down story, it, it almost felt like um, almost like a spiritual revelation of oh my oh my god like it's it, it's true obviously that the, that the world is you know x billion of year, years old and life evolved on it very slowly and it became more complex it crawled out of the oceans whatever whatever but it is also true that the earth is the stories we tell about it like the world is the stories that we tell and um and so much of my my thinking was trying to get to some bottom turtle and that there is no bottom turtle it is turtles all the way all down the Right. And so now, like, it doesn't really help, except that it, it, it helps give, like, former expression to m my thinking problem. Like, now when I'm having that thinking problem, I can at least say to myself, hold up, Green. Yeah. Like, you're looking for the bottom turtle. There is no bottom turtle. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> so how do you, after you've done that, how yeah. do you get out? Obviously, it's not easy. Yeah, I mean, the weird thing about a spiral, right, like Aza talks about this in the book, is that if you follow it inwards, it doesn't ever end. It just gets tighter and tighter and tighter forever. Like, it gets infinitely tighter. And I, I remember, like, trying to express this to my psychologist, and my psychologist said, you realize that if you just turn around, the spiral also goes infinitely outward. And I was like, oh, God, that's very metaphorically resonant, but it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we all know spirals go in one direction. Tighter and tighter and tighter until you yeah. die inside of the prison of yourself. And then, and then she said, time's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she said, that was a great session. I think we were close to a breakthrough, but next week, next week we're gonna get there for sure. Um, she's, she's, she's great, actually. Uh, well, the book is wonderful. Thanks, man. And thanks for writing. Oh, thank you. It's great John to Green, see you. Everyone. Funding for the interview show is provided by Field Notes, vintage styled, made in the USA pocket journals and stationery products. Learn more at fieldnotesbrand.com.